In this tutorial, we'll be using the ideal gas law and solving a, a stoichiometry problem that involves uh, gases in the chemical equation. So, uh, one one key thing. So this. So look, first of all, let's read the problem. What volume of oxygen gas? at 20 degrees Celsius and 0.976 atm is needed to react with 5 grams of glucose C6H12O6. Um, so first of all, when you're using the ideal gas law, um, let's, so let's write out the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT. Okay, one thing to be really careful about when you're using this is you need to make sure that the pressure, the volume, and the moles all match. They have to be for the same substance. So if you read this problem carefully, it says what volume of oxygen gas okay, is needed to react with five grams of glucose. Okay, so we can't, so this is a common mistake. Students will convert this five grams of glucose. They'll convert that into moles and they go, oh, that's N. Okay, I'm gonna plug that in here. Okay, but, but this problem again is saying what volume of oxygen gas okay so uh, so you need to get moles of oxygen okay and this problem gives you grams of glucose another way to think about it is when you're given a chemical reaction um, at in some point during the problem process you're probably going to need to go from mole to mole of, from mole of substance to moles of another substance okay and uh, just to just to be careful um, what needs to always match are P, V, and N, and I like to actually use subscripts, so the pressure of oxygen, and this will become a lot more important, even more important when we're working with um, partial pressures and mixtures of gases, which is which is uh, coming up uh, really soon. So uh, pressure of oxygen gas times the volume of oxygen gas is equal to the moles of oxygen gas times RT. Okay, so if I, and we're, we're going to try to solve for volume of oxygen gas, so isolate VO2, and it would be moles of O2 times RT divided by the pressure of O2. Okay, sometimes, uh, sometimes the pressure is going to be equal to the external pressure. Okay, so sometimes the, the uh, pressure may not need to match, but definitely for, sh for uh, definitely for sure, volume and the mole, those must match. So you have to make sure those always match when you're doing an ideal gas law. So first of all, we need to balance this out. So six carbons, and we'll put a six there. Okay, we'll put a six there to get 12 H's. And uh, that would be 12 plus six, 18 oxygens. So, so I need to know what to put here. So I'll, I'll say X times two plus six equals 18, so I need to put 6 right here as well, okay, and that would give me um, 18 oxygen on the left. Okay, so if you think back to when we first went over the ideal gas law, um, I said moles is, uh, is, is kind of tricky, so it's hidden, so it's very hidden in this problem. Um, so we're going to take our 5 grams of glucose, okay, so we don't have moles of O2. Once we have this, we're good because we're given pressure and we're given temperature. So we're going to change this into moles of O2 using the balanced equation. So first we'll use the molar mass. So one mole of glucose, C6H12O6, is 180.2 180 grams. And uh, there are six moles react for every one mole. Glucose, so we'll write six moles of O2 here over one mole of glucose. Okay, and uh, I end up getting 0.167 moles of O2. Okay, now we're ready to plug in. Okay, so volume of O2 would be equal to 0.167 moles. O2 times R, 0 0.08206. Okay, and then the temperature, 273 plus 28. So this needs to be in Kelvin. And the 
pressure they give us is 0 0.976 atm okay if i solve this out i wind up getting 4.23 liters of o2 okay just to recap your moles when you're using the ideal gas law okay your moles need to match with the volume okay so they have to be for the same substance another thing too is uh it's it's just almost a crime to use uh, to plug in solid so if you change this to moles of glucose and then put that in the gas law you'd be plugging a solid into the ideal gas law okay which is like basically should be a crime so here's the um so here's the one for you guys to try so go to this slide okay so when silver oxide is heated it decomposes from this solid into uh, solid silver and oxygen gas okay so notice you're given grams of the solid so uh, silver oxide okay and you're supposed to find a o2 gas there okay so again so similar to the example i just did your uh your um your moles of gas is kind of like hidden as one of the other species in the reaction all right so that's the end of our tutorial let's see what you guys come up with